Do you guys remember when Performer Pals were tier zero? Hit thousand, hit thousand, hit thousand, hit thousand. You got no, no. It's King Bear Pants. All right, guys, so the other day in my Odd Ice deck profile, I said I was going to be showing you my Performer Pal deck. And this video got pushed back a few days, and I apologize, but I had other videos to do, announcing, like, the new tournament that we're putting on and then working on that. So once again, I'm really sorry for the wait, but I really hope that you enjoy this deck because I have been working on it on and off since the announcement of the new June list, which gave us Joker back to three, so the hype is real. I have been just so stoked having Joker back. It's like getting Stratos back, except we don't have Stratos back. But anyways, guys, I'm going to show you the whole main deck, side deck, and extra deck, and I'm going to explain all of my card choices. And I'll show some clips and screenshots of my replays as well. So first things first, about this deck profile, you'll notice that the title of the deck is Magician 2. And that is because it started off as a Magician deck, but as I kept testing and testing and testing, I kept adding in more performer powers and more draw power and more tech cards, and I ended up adding the Brilliant Fusion and it just ended up making the deck so much better. And I wanted to challenge myself to make a really good deck without using the zoo engine. Zoos are really good, but just testing the pendulums themselves, I really wanted a second normal summon, which made me add the Brilliant Fusion engine. But yeah, through testing, this is what I came up with. It started off as a Magician deck, and obviously it is no longer a Magician deck. So of course, in June, we're getting back three Jokers, so you gotta play your three Jokers. And for the main high scales of the deck, slash your main draw engine of the deck, you play two Turtle and three Charmander. <laughs> Lizard draw. These guys just really help go through your deck, and they also are scale sixes, so it lets you pendulum summon Persona Dragon. On Ice Persona Dragon is a level five, and it lets you negate an opponent's extra deck monster's effect on their turn, which is really good. And this is the Draco Pal build, so you play one Luster, which is the main tuner of the deck. Plus, you can pop a scale and then search another copy of that scale to your hand, so that's really good. And then I play two Vector and two Master Pendulum, which are not only level four beaters, but they're scale threes, so that's pretty good as well. Although you do play some level threes in this deck, so ideally you want to have a scale 2 or scale 1 with Persona Dragon. And you play three copies of probably the best card in the deck besides Joker, Performer Pal, Pendulum Sorcerer. And Pendulum Sorcerer allows you to pop two cards on your side of the field and then search two Performer Pals from your deck to your hand. It's just, it's phenomenal. And something else to keep in mind, in the Pendulum Zone, it makes all Performer Pals you control gain a thousand attacks, so it makes for really easy OTKs. And then I personally like to play three copies of Archfina Centric because it's arguably the best Pendulum Monster of all time. I can't tell you how many times I've activated this card and sniped out like a solemn warning or strike and then pendulum summons you know four or five monsters from the extra deck it's just too good not to mention you can normal summon this thing and out something stupid like I don't know dark law for example archfina centric is literally an MST plus an exile force it is too good not to play and then I play three copies of odd eyes persona dragon which as I was stating earlier gives you a negate on your opponent's turn and it's also a scale one and next up might be the most important monster in this build of the deck baba boom that's because it lets you go through your deck and like pick your hands. And it also shuffles back Garnet if you draw into Garnet or too many Brilliant Fusions, for example. And on top of all that, it floats, so you can actually combo with it with Pendulum Sorcerer. Using Pendulum Sorcerer to pop it as a Chain Link 1 and Baba Boon as a Chain Link 2, it's so good. And next up, I play 3 Ash Blossom because you kind of have to play it. It's the best hand trap of all time. It stops basically any interaction with the deck. It stops searches, it stops mills, and it stops summoning from the deck. Plus, it is a level 3 tuner, so you could use it to Synchro Summon for Ignister with Persona Dragon if you wanted to. And I tech in a Trick Clown. Uh, guys, people forget that this card exists. This card is not only really good with Brilliant Fusion, but it keeps summoning itself to the field so you can keep abusing that rank 4 toolbox. It's so good. And last up, of course, is Garnet, which is the Brilliant Fusion target. And then I play three copies of Brilliant Fusion so you can go into Seraphonite and get that second normal summon. It's just way too good. And then I play three copies of Duelist Alliance, which is just a phenomenal card. You can not only search Luster Pendulum, Master Pendulum, but you can search out Pendulum Sorcerer, which is really good. It's insane. And I play one copy of Galaxy Cyclone because it's really good against the True Draco crap. And it's good against True Dragos because their continuous spells cannot pop your scales if they don't hit the graveyard. And I play two copies of Desires because that plus one is just way too good. Plus, if you activate it after Brilliant Fusion, it is also really, really good. And for the last card in the deck, I play Treacherous Trap Hole to use with Rafflesia. I would say the main thing that sucks about Desires is hitting your Treacherous Trap Hole. I don't mind hitting Brilliant Fusion and Garnet. It's really cool when you activate Desires and you get rid of, like, let's just say two brilliance and a garnet like all those dead cards out of your deck and then you like plus one it's just really good in that aspect but i really don't like hitting treacherous especially going first because it just makes reflasia useless and to the extra deck i played one copy of ignister which is debatably the best synchro monster ever especially with pendulums anyways i mean omega is another really really powerful one but in pendulums i mean you cannot beat ignister it summons a level four pendulum from the deck and it gives you a non-targeting spin what more can you ask for oh yeah it's got 20 
50 attack as well. And I play one Seraphonite, of course, to go with Brilliant Fusion. And I play one Dynaster and number 38 for the rank 8 combo with Ignister. And the Draco combo would not be complete without Magister Paladin, of course. Which Magister Paladin also gives you a search for any Pendulum at the end phase, which is phenomenal. And for the rank 4 toolbox, let's start this off with Reflasia, which, you know, lets you send Treacherous on your opponent's turn. And since you're playing a lot of Spellcasters, you could play Trapeze Magician, which makes OTKs really easy. And then you have the Utopia package, which outs, like, everything. And, of course, you have the classic Castell. And I'm playing the new Tornado Dragon because I actually like making this on my first turn. It's pretty good, actually. It can be very disruptive against certain decks. It really can be. Plus, there have been times where I've used it to pop my own Brilliant Fusion to get rid of the Seraphonite to make more room. <laughs> so, yeah, Tornado Dragon is pretty good. And for the last rank 4, of course, we have Abyss Dweller, which locks out your opponent's graveyard. And since we're playing a bunch of level 3s, we're going to play the two best rank 3 monsters, which, of course, is Phantom Knights of Break Sword and Grand Pulse. Break Sword pops one of your own cards to pop one of your opponent's cards, and Grand Pulse just has a fat ass and lets you pop one of your opponent's spells and traps. And I'm playing one rank 5 just for good measure with, you know, Seraphonite and Persona being level 5s, and I just picked Dorindle not only for the Unbring effect, but because you can make your opponent's spell target your dead Brilliant Fusion, which could be really disruptive for your opponent. And for the side deck, I'm playing 3 Dinko Seca for all of those back row decks plus Paleozoics, and I'm playing 3 Side Blocker, which outs everything and outs like anti spell. I wish Side Blocker would turn off D Barrier after it's already been activated because that is the main thing against this deck besides Masterpiece. But the Ash Blossom helps keep Masterpiece from getting out. And I'm also citing the Kaijus in case Masterpiece does come out. But the bottom line here is Side Blocker turns off like so much random crap preemptively. And it also turns off a lot of continuous effects on the field. So it's just too good not to side. Not to mention it's a level 4 just like Dinko. So you can actually X these with it. And I'm citing 3 Artifact Lance here for those Invo shenanigans because if you chain this to Invocation, their turns basically over most of the time, so it's just too good not to side. Then on your turn, you know, pin five and just win. And like I was talking about a minute ago, I am siding the entire kaiju engine for not only masterpiece, but really just to out anything. And the last spell I side is Raigeki. I just really wanted to show you guys this deck to show you that performer powers are not going to be dead. They're still going to be playable. They're still going to be a sneaky deck for the WCQ, as are magicians and metal fellows and all of those other really powerful pendulum decks. So go ahead and let me know what you think about this deck down in the comment section. And as always. Be sure to dick slap that like button and subscribe. Subscribe! <laughs>